Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of the show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. One of the most politicized cases of the last 40 years is Roe versus Wade, right? Most conservatives want to overturn this ruling because according to them, it's a law about killing fetuses. That's what they're doing. They're killing fetuses today. Tomorrow, it's going to be regular babies. And then, then we'll have legalized murder by Sunday. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, nobody tell the conservatives about what the American military does. Just <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't talk about the you know, legalized state-sanctioned murder that all wars are. Don't bring that up, okay? They just, you know, don't, don't bring up all those wars that they loved and dr dodged the draft for. Just leave that one go. But to liberals, this is, a pretty important, this is a pretty big and important case because it's a key issue in women's rights. In reality, what it does is it upholds the right to privacy between a woman's health and her doctor. And it grants her that right to privacy so that the state can't make a decision on her behalf. In 1969, a pregnant woman in Texas couldn't afford to keep her baby. Abortion laws were different state to state, and in Texas, you could only have an abortion if the mother's health was in danger. And since this woman couldn't afford to take care of a child, uh, this brought up the issue of America's great poverty problem, right? It, it put a little bit of a, she, she shined a little bit of a light on the great poverty problem, though it wasn't the star of the show. It, did, it, was, it was a nice side character. Like if this was like a middle school play, like uh, the great American poverty problem was like a tree. Oh. You know? <laughs> like it was there, but everybody was like, the good tree, huh? Look at you not fucking moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that is probably the best metaphor for American poverty you're ever going to hear <laughs> on a comedy show. So you're welcome. <laughs> but this woman, uh, she found a law firm that was interested in taking down anti-abortion laws, right? Now, Henry Wade, the man that prosecuted Jack Ruby, went again Jane Roe. Jane Roe was the woman that, uh, that, that they, were, they were defending. And he lost. He lost in a Texas lower court. Like, even Texas looked at this guy and was like, hey, dude, I really feel like you should sit this one out, you know? Like, this is really not your penis's battle, like, at all. Like, I know you want it to be, but, like, this is super not about your dick. So, so look, Hen uh, Henry Wade was, was an honorable man, right? He's a Texan. He's a good Southern man. 
uh, and he decided to do the most mature thing that he could possibly do, which is sue all the doctors that wanted to perform an abortion, which what, what a graceful loser this guy is. Henry Wade just sounds like every guy at a bar that calls a woman a bitch because she, you know, asked him to put pants on in a public place. <laughs> He's just like, fine, whatever, I'll put, I'll put my pants on. You're, it's your loss, lady, you know, it's because... <laughs> let me tell you something, broad, because he'd probably call her broad. <laughs> Like, not like a fun way, like definitely like in a misogynistic way. Like, <laughs> like hey, thank you for me. making that distinction. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. yeah, there's two different ways to say that word. Toots, I feel like the same way. Like, when PI say toots, acceptable. When drunk assholes say toots, ooh, <laughs> who hurt you, sir? That's <laughs> where it goes. But he would look at it and be like, look, my dick has won awards, awards that I, I gave my dick. So, wait out! <laughs> That's the type of guy Henry Wade seems like. But here's the thing, right? In the time that it took the, the, the courts to hear this case and make a decision, Jane Roe went, again, went ahead and had her child and then had to put her baby up for adoption. And at this point, in time, in, in our time, in 2020, uh, the Supreme Court is primarily conservative and is filling up with judges that want to overturn Roe v. Wade. Because it won. The Supreme Court decided on a 7-2 decision, in a 7-2 decision, that states can't tell women what to do with their body. That is, a, that is a violation of the 14th Amendment because women have the right to privacy and underneath the 14th Amendment, the, the courts decided that the state has to uphold a woman's right to privacy, that she has those rights granted. And that was a, a huge landmark case, right? And after this case, and when this decision was made in 1970, that was the last year that Henry Wade ever got laid. <laughs> Never had sex again, you guys. Right now, we're all afraid that, that Roe v. Wade is going to be overturned, right? And, and that is a possibility, because if it does get overturned, it, the reality that we'll be facing is that it all goes down to the states. The states will go back to making the decision uh, for themselves. So each state will make a different decision. And we already saw something like this happen. Right? In the summer of 2019, states like Alabama, Georgia, Missouri, Kentucky all passed these archaic anti-abortion laws from the dark ages. You know, At this point, we're really about three steps away from bringing back witch burnings. <laughs> it's very exciting, very exciting times, you guys. Now, even though this happened last year, despite the fact that, that state laws were, were in direct conflict of federal laws set by Roe v. Wade, and this, uh, but the Supreme Court just stayed silent throughout the whole issue. They never made a peep. They never really wanted to make a decision on this thing. But we the people were not. We the people went out there and fought this thing and made sure that, that women did have uh, the, the right to their health. They, they, they could make the decisions that they did have the right to privacy. And you know, not only does this bring up the issue of wrongfully shutting down women's health centers like Planned Parenthood in these states, but also the issue of poverty that Roe v. Wade kind of sort of highlighted. Think about it. In order to get an abortion of, of any kind, or, or any sort of women's health services, these women are now going to have to take the day off from work, go to a different state, get their services, which in some cases are not cheap, and drive back either the same day or stay at a hotel, which is going to mean that they're going to have to take another day off from work. And the cost of all of these things can potentially be enormous. And this is a really easy way to make poverty a crime, which is something Republicans love to do, while the Democrats placate and ignore it, right? They're like, hey, look at that tree on stage. It's a nice tree. <laughs> it's a good tree. Is that birch? I think it's birch. Now, in order to overturn the ruling of Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court would have to take on a case from the lower courts that involve the issue of abortion similar to Roe v. Wade. Right now, there are two cases that fit that description. 
And they need, these conservative judges are going to have to give a good reason for their decision. And if they come out and say, hey, it's killing babies and we are valuing the sanctity of life, then I guess they need to start making a decision on American war crimes too, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. They need to start calling in all the elites that have started their wars and, and unsanctified life for, for the last five fucking decades. Look, this is the highest court in the land, all right? We shan't have any hypocrisy. Embarrassing. <laughs> Can't have a war crime-sized egg on your face. That's embarrassing. And look, I know this is very scary, and I know there's probably a lot of people out there that, that are worried, and, and before we start freaking out and starting to panic and, and, and hoarding, you know, condoms and birth control to peddle in a post-row world. Let's, let's all just take a breath, right? Whew. Courts only decide on hot, bus, hot button issues when there is public put on them for, uh, or, or pressure put on them from the public. Just like Congress. Congress doesn't really pass laws that are ethical or for the people until we decide to put pressures on them. An eight-hour workday was deemed constitutional only after the labor movement kept taking the issue to the streets. The same thing happened with child labor, right? The courts were the last branch of government to get involved in the civil rights movement. The courts didn't want to make any bold decisions. They don't. They don't make any bold decisions unless there's a lot of people making noise. So if they start trying to undo Roe versus Wade, then we make so much noise that they can't ignore it. Now, fortunately, the thing with the courts is that they have been on the right side of history. A lot of times they have not. A lot of times they have been on the side of Grand Dragon Justice Taney. That's... That's kind of the reality of the situation, right? The reality is that there are more stains on the robes of the Supreme Court than clean spots. I don't know if that's the way that saying goes, but I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Right? Look, the Supreme Court has, has, has way more dirty laundry and no more quarters to operate the washer and dryer of justice might be a good thing because Lady Justice is blind. So, you know, she can't see that mustard and civil rights stain that's like right there on the Supreme Court. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on wh when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next.